this projection is going to be the PA projection. The PA projection is 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 is, is standard on uh, a chest radiograph. You do a PA and a lateral. That's typically what make up a uh, an exam, a chest radiograph uh, or a chest exam, radiographic exam. That's what it will include: PA and a lateral. Can you add more projections? Can you take projections? Yeah, and it depends on what, first on the patient's condition, and it also depends on uh, the doctor and the radiologist. So a lot of times they know specifically what they are looking at and they'll tell you just do just a lateral or just do an oblique, do a AP instead of a PA. So, <clears throat> but typically when you see a chest x-ray, it is made, made up by two, made, by two, excuse me, the two uh, radiographs, the PA and the lateral. So let's just start with the PA. All right, so the PA projection. Why PA, why not AP? There are some advantages of doing a chest PA. The first thing is your heart is going to be closer to the image receptor, and so there is less magnification of the heart, and you can see more of the lung fields. As you will see in just a second, you also do chest x-rays at 72 inches because there is also less magnification. Not only the heart, but everything else is less magnified when you're farther from the image receptor. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing that I'm gonna tell you in just a bit is that most chest x-rays, they need to be done upright, either standing or sitting. Why do you want to do that? You want to do that because fluid levels. A lot of times patients will collect fluid in their lungs because of pneumonia, because of uh, trauma. And so, you know, swelling, you know, you, you swell up because you had an injury to, to your tissues. And so your tissues begin to release fluid and that's the swelling. The same thing happens with your lungs. You hit your lungs, you get punch your ribs, and your lungs, you know, they will react by, by putting up fluid. And so a lot of times doctors wanna see that fluid. Now that fluid is not water, okay? Sometimes doctors will say, oh, you have, patient has water in their lungs. It's not really water. What you have is gooey stuff. You have mucus, you have pus. It's just sticky stuff, all right? But in any case, whatever fluid it is, you want to be able to see that fluid and that's why upright is done then you can see just like i'm showing you with this bottle you have fluid in the bottom air in the on top and you can see that there is is not one single density right mm -hmm. okay if you were to do it with the patient laying down and the x-ray on top how can you see the fluid you're not going to be able to see it mm -hmm. and so that's why it is ideal to do it sitting up or upright sense mm -hmm. good and also it is important that for example if a patient has been laying down for say an hour before you do the x-ray it is ideal to sit them up or standing up and leave them there for at least five minutes like I said before the fluid that you find in there is not water it's not just coming back down immediately yeah it's sticky gooey stuff and it's going to take time for it to descend okay all right sorry that you weren't no, no. i thought it was yours <laughs> i know if you have to go to their room and they've been just lying in their bed you should have the them first thing up. i do when i go in and i'm doing a portable i see them up mm -hmm. and i leave them there and then i do my stuff mm -hmm. i bring my equipment i get my grid i get pillowcases mm -hmm. i get get the distance i get set up but by then you know three four five minutes have passed the patient is already sitting up then i put the uh, plate okay. all right and look the first thing that i'm bringing up to you what is it? shielding okay we're going to shield every patient for a pa projection you want to place the shield in the back okay in the back why is that because the extras are coming from the back right you will probably hear technology say that sometimes you want to put a shield in the front. It is possible, okay? 
I'm not going to get into the details of why, but we'll do that in radiobiology next semester. I'll explain why sometimes you want it in the front, but for the most part, it will be in the back, okay? Distance, 72, I told you that. Image receptor, always a 14 by 17, which is the largest size we have. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confused. You said shielding when it's posterior, anterior should be in the back? Yes, because the x-ray tube is the x-rays that travel in this way to your posterior side. Uh, so you need the left shield here. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Next, central ray. CR stands for central ray. The central ray is placed at T7 and the mid-sagittal plane. So add mid-sagittal plane. Collimation. You're going to close the field only when it's possible. Okay? There are many times where you don't want to collimate because you might mm -hmm. clip anatomy of interest. And so you're defeating the purpose of collimating because then you have to repeat the x ray. And so collimate only when, when you can. If you're not sure, if you don't get, just leave them open. Leave them open to at least a 14 by 17. No more than this because there's no field, right? So to this size at least. All right, so I told you before, the uh, PA projection, just like the lateral or any projection with the chest X-ray, ideally upright. So you have the patient upright and then you bring the patient against the bucky, okay? Look at me for a second. Bring the patient against the body. Bring their feet apart, at least a foot and a half apart, so they have better balance. Because if you have your feet apart, then the patient will start doing this, or this, or leaning forward, or backwards. So, keep, so they have good balance, okay? Uh, I said about a foot and a half. You can have them uh, in a line with their hips, so they are in good balance, okay? The next thing you want to do is bring them very close against the bucky, against the board. Very close. So they are, they are touching the board. You don't want a gap between them and, and the board. The closer the patient is to the bucky, to the board, the better the resolution you have. So right against the board. Next, we're going to have them move their shoulders forward. When they move their shoulders forward, this is what they are doing. This, not this, but this, forward, against the bucky. By doing that, by moving the shoulders forward, what you do is you bring the scapulae, you bring it out of the lung field, and you put them right over the uh, uh, side of the ribs. That, is that making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Next, we're going to extend the chin. And when I said extend the chin, I'm not saying doing this. Well, let me start by saying the purpose of extending the chin is so you don't have the chin over the apices. Okay? Because if you sometimes patients are going to be like this and the chin is right over the apices. And so you want to just bring it straight up. Okay? You don't want to bring it up like that because then you have the occipital bone then over the apices and you defeat the purpose. So it's just straight. Okay, you can elevate it a little bit, but that's it. If you see the occipital bone over the spine, then that's too much. But you don't mean like push it forward? No, not <laughs> necessarily. Yeah, it's just straight, yeah. Then you're gonna check for rotation. How do we check for rotation? When you're looking at the patient, you're gonna, for one thing, touch the patient and feel that they are right against the board. The next thing, look at the patient's hips, see how they are. I can be straightforward, but I can I can do this, and that's going to rotate the bottom of my of my chest. My lungs are going to be rotated, and so look at the hips, look at the shoulders, make sure that they are in alignment and that they are not rotated. All chest X-rays, there are exceptions. Okay, there are exceptions, but for the most part. All chest x-rays are done in inspiration. And I agree with your textbook. You want to do the exposure after the second inspiration. Mm -hmm. 
Why is that? Because a lot of times you tell the patient, the patients are overwhelmed. They are looking at the room, they're looking at the equipment, lights, whatever. They are all overwhelmed with what's going on. They don't want to be in the hospital. They, they, you know, it's, it's overwhelming. And then, you know, you tell them, move your shoulders forward, okay? Uh, stand up straight, and then you tell them, take a breath in. The, they might just go. And that's not a deep inspiration. You want a deep inspiration. And so that's why you give them a chance to kind of get in, into a uh, routine. You tell them, take a breath in, so they breathe in. Blow it out, they blow it out. Take a breath in again, hold it in, hold it in. Bing, then you make the exposure. So after the second inspiration. Okay, I have a little, excuse me, uh, asterisk here. On female with patients uh, that have large breasts, if a patient has normal, normal size breasts, then not, not a big deal, but patients with large breasts or patients with implants, If uh, this is a, a man, but if this was a, a, a lady, what you will have is the breast here, they absorb radiation, and so this area of the lungs is gonna lose, lose density, and it's gonna, look, it's gonna look lighter. Make sense? Especially with someone with really large breasts. And so what you wanna do is have the patient, not you, have the patient, <laughs> hold their breast, bring the breast out to the side, and then lean against the board, okay? Are you still gonna have some soft tissue here? Yeah, but that's better than having it all over, mm -hmm. all right? And the same thing mm -hmm. goes with implants. Implants, they show up like that. It doesn't matter if it's saline or silicone, whatever, they, they always show up. Mm -hmm. And so, same thing, ask them to hold them, bring them out to the side and lean against the board. They need their hands on the outside of the chest. Oh, no, the, the hands go out. No, what they so what they are doing is this. They grab their breast. All right, grab their breast. Boom, boom, and they go boom, and then they put their hand down. Oh, okay. So with the pressure so that you put it, you just want your chest. With the pressure that you put it, then he, he holds the breast on the side. Okay, that makes sense. How mm -hmm. do you know what's big enough that it won't? <laughs> you don't know what big is. Yeah. He'll know. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm. I'm gonna, I know, but I, I don't know what size. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... How do you know if someone has implants or not? Like, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a tough that question. Because it could it, be yeah. smaller. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really I don't know if you can ask. Yeah, it's probably not polite to ask. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where so. you can. Well, it's a medical procedure, though. I mean, yeah. It's, what was that? It's a medical procedure. It's important information. Yes. I, I think it is important. No, but when yeah. we don't want to. They don't want to talk about their age. They don't want to talk about exactly. a lot of things. Even, exactly. Even it, in they're a very, situation. you know, yeah, it, it can be very protective. They can be very uh, private about it. For men, they always ask them for Yeah, men was different. Yeah. Men was yeah. different. You, you pretty much have the right to ask. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With chest x-rays. But here's one thing. Okay. If you see, say, I don't know, a 50-year-old lady in, 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 in the breast are are, hasn't taken the normal shape down here, you know, if they're still up, Looking great. you're probably, you're going, mm, yeah, that's, that's those are implants. Okay. Yeah, and, I don't want to sound rude, but, you know, you, you look, you look at the gowns, and, and you say, well, those are too high. Okay. Those are implants. Yeah, that's, that's just. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, so, and then, here, here's the other thing. Either you know or you don't. Uh, if you suspect they have implants, do the same. Do what I just mm. showed you. Yeah. Have them move out. If they have, if they were real breasts, you're not hurting the exam by doing what I just did. You improve the exam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and if they are implants, then the better. Right. <coughs> yes. So what if we didn't know, and then we see the image, and there's all this, you know, implants and all that. Do we ask them to separate it then? Depends, especially some of the older implants, those that had mm. some specific silicones, they mm. were very dense and they do interfere with, I mean, really interfere. I mean, they, you get some point that it's, that the density is almost like this here. 
and so it takes a lot of density. So you go back and, and do it again. Or you can check with the radiologist and say, hey, look, this is what we have. What do you think? Should we try it again? There's only one projection. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, one thing when it comes to, you know, breasts are large or small, look at the patient. A lot of times, overweight patients. They don't have large breasts, they have small breasts. Yes. It's just that they have a lot of soft tissue. Even if you were to do that, it's not gonna work. So I'm talking large breasts. Yeah. I know. Large breasts. I'm a girlfriend. Yeah. Large breasts. Yeah. <laughs> she wants them reduced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, forties or whatever, you know, then yeah. Yeah. then you have to do that. All right, let's move on. Uh, it's been an hour. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh